Welcome back AP Calc. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find higher derivatives. So follow along. Uh, I'm going to go through the odds here, looking at number one first. And with number one, we want to find, this is the fourth derivative. We're given y is equal to this uh, polynomial. So we're going to start with taking the first derivative, dy dx. The first derivative, we use the power rule. So we're going to have negative 10x to the fourth minus 12x cubed minus 12x squared. And then we're going to take the second derivative, which is just the derivative of the first derivative. So the second derivative would be negative 40x cubed minus 36 x squared minus 24 x then the third derivative the third derivative would be negative 120 x squared minus 72 x minus 24 and finally we want the fourth derivative And the fourth derivative would be negative 240x minus 72. And that would be our final answer. For number three, here we have it in radical notation. Well, we can't do too much with it in radical notation. So we are going to rewrite this as x to the 1 half. And now, again, we want to take this notation here. means we want the fourth uh, derivative again. So the first derivative we write as f prime. Now that we have it written as x to the one half, the one half is going to go out in front and we're going to have x one half x to the negative one half. And we want to keep it in that notation as we go along here. The second derivative would be negative one fourth x to the negative three halves because I got to subtract one from this again. And the third derivative would be now it's going to be positive. So you multiply these and that's going to be positive three over eight X to the negative five halves. And now we come to the fourth derivative, which is what we want. We write the fourth derivative like that and multiply. This time it's going to be negative. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15. 8 times 2 is 16. So negative 15 sixteenths x to the negative 7 halves. And since it was written in radical form to begin with, we may want to go back to that form. So we're going to write this as negative. Uh, the 15 is going to go on top. The 16 is going to go on the bottom. And this is a negative exponent, so it's going to get sent to the bottom. This would be the square root of x to the seventh. And we've got our answer. So either of these here would be fine. Okay, with number five, uh, we've got f of x is equal to sine of 2x, and we want to take the fifth derivative. So let's go ahead. Uh, the first derivative. The derivative of sine is cosine. It's going to be cosine of 2x. And we have to take the derivative of the inside, so that's going to be a 2. Then we're going to take the second derivative. The derivative of cosine is negative. So is negative sine of 2x, and as we do that, another 2 is going to come out in front. So there's already 2 there. 2 times 2 is going to be negative 4. The third derivative, the derivative of sine is cosine. So it's going to be cosine of 2x, and using the chain rule, the 2 is going to come out, get multiplied by the 4, so it's going to be negative 8. The fourth derivative, and we write the fourth derivative with a little four is going to be, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's going to be sine of 2x 
and then multiply it by a negative 2. So it's going to be 16. And then the fifth derivative, finally. So the derivative of sine is cosine, cosine of 2x. And then multiply by 2. 16 is already out there. Multiply by 2 is going to be 32. Now let's look at number 7. In number 7, we want to take the third derivative of secant. And so that I have enough room, I'm going to start over here. So the first derivative of secant is secant tangent, like that. Then we're going to do the second derivative using the product rule. So the product rule says it's going to be first times the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is going to be a secant tangent. We may want to simplify this. So we've got secant cubed x plus secant x tangent squared x. So that's still the second derivative. And now we need to take, well, this has two terms to it. So the derivative of secant cubed we're going to have to use a chain rule, so the 3 is going to come out in front. Secant squared x times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Plus, now we have a product here, and it is first times the derivative of the second. Uh, the derivative of tangent squared is going to be 2 tangent x times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of tangent is secant squared plus the second, which is tangent squared, times the derivative of the first. The derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. And can we simplify this a little bit? So Looks like our first term here is, is secant to the third x tangent x. Forgot the x in there. The second term is 2 secant cubed x tangent x. And the third term is secant tangent x cubed. And if we combine those together, we'd have 5 secant cubed x tangent x plus secant tangent cubed x. Forgot my x's in there. Okay, number 9, we want to take the third derivative of cotangent. So let's take the first derivative. The first derivative of cotangent is going to be negative cosecant squared of x. Then we take the second derivative. And for the second derivative, we're going to have to use the chain rule. Uh, so that's going to be negative 2 cosecant, drop it down a power, of x times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x. We can simplify that. So that's going to give us a positive 2 cosecant squared x cotangent x. Now we can take the third derivative. To do the third derivative, we're going to have to do a product rule. So here's our first, here's our second. So we want first, which would be 2 cosecant squared x times the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of the first here, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So that's going to be 4 cosecant x times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. 
We can then simplify this. So these are all multiplied together. That's going to give us negative 2 cosecant to the fourth x plus, uh, actually minus because we've got a negative sign come up here. So if we multiply all of these, we're going to have negative 4. We've got cosecant and we've got two of those, so it'd be squared. And then we have, looks like two cotangents. So cotangent squared x. And then this would be our final answer. Okay, for number 11, uh, we have an exponential. We want to take the fourth derivative. So the first derivative of e to the 3x would be e to the 3x times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of 3x is just 3. And may want to simplify that, put the 3 out in front. We take the second derivative. The second derivative of 3e to the 3x is going to be 3e to the 3x times the derivative of the inside. So now we got 9 on the outside. Then we take the third derivative and probably see a pattern at this point. It's going to be 9e to the 3x times the derivative of the inside. So we're up to 27. And then the fourth derivative is going to be 27e to the 3x times 3, which comes out to 81e to the 3x. Okay, for 13, we want to take the fourth derivative of natural log of 2x. So we're going to have to use the chain rule here. Uh, the first derivative is going to be, well, the derivative of natural log is 1 over. Uh, and this time we got 2x inside of it. So and then chain rule multiplied by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x is just 2. That means that we're going to have 1 over x. And since we have 1 over x, we're going to rewrite it as x to the negative 1. We take the second derivative. The second derivative of x to the negative 1. Now we can use the power rule. That's why we write it this way. So the negative 1 comes out in front. We drop it down a power. We have negative x to the negative 2. And the third derivative. Uh, the negative 2 comes out in front. So it's going to be positive 2. x to the negative 3. And finally, we get the fourth derivative negative 3 comes out, gets multiplied, we get negative 6, x to the negative 4th, or we could write it as negative 6 over x to the 4th, this way. Number 15, I said you didn't have to do yet, but uh, this is the, we're going to take the derivative of inverse sine, or arc sine, and the derivative of arc sine looks like this in general. So if f of x is just equal to sine of negative 1 of x, then the arc sine is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, here we're going to take the arc sine of 3x. So we have to use the chain rule and this, this rule here. So the first derivative is going to be 1 over the square root, 1 minus what's inside 3x. Well, that whole 3x has to be squared, so I'm just going to write like this. 3x squared times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 3x is 3. Let's simplify that a little bit. So on the bottom here, we're going to have 1 minus, uh, if I square this out, it's going to be 9x squared. And then, of course, if I'm multiplying by 3 here, I can just put the 3 on top. Now, in order to differentiate again, we're going to want to rewrite this. So I'm going to write it as 3, and this is a square root. It's in the denominator, so that means I'm taking the reciprocal of it, and I can write it like this. So that's my first derivative, just written so I can use the power rule now. And now we can do the second derivative, which is what's asked for. So the negative 1 half would come out in front get multiplied by 3. We'd have 1 minus 9x squared here. 
we drop it down a power, so now it's negative 3 halves. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 18x. Simplify this a little bit more. So negative 3 halves times negative 18x. Uh, see the 2's here would cancel. And then we'd have 27x times 1 minus 9x squared to the negative 3 halves. And we can write that as 27x over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. All of that raised to the third power. Or you could just leave it like this too. So either one is fine. Okay, for 17, we want to take the second derivative of inverse cotangent, or arc cotangent, of 2x. So I'll put that in parentheses. And the first thing we have to know is what is the rule for inverse cotangent? Well, if f of x is equal to cotangent of x, then the derivative would look like this. It would be negative and then 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's the derivative formula that we're going to use here. And we're going to have to use the chain rule. So now taking our function here, uh, cotangent is going to be negative, or inverse cotangent is going to be negative 1 over 1 plus, here we have 2x inside of it. And that's going to get squared. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. If we simplify that a little bit, we're going to have a negative 2. I'm just going to put the negative at the top here so I don't lose it. And then 1 plus 4x squared. We would, in order to take the derivative again, uh, you could use the quotient rule, but it's probably going to be easier if you rewrite it and use the chain rule. So I'm going to write it like this to the negative 1. And now I can take the second derivative pretty easily. So this is going to come out to the front and get multiplied. Now it's 2, 1 plus 4x squared. Drop it down a power, so it's a negative 2 times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside of this is going to just be 8x. And then we can simplify that like this. Or we can rewrite it as 16x over 1 plus 4x squared, all of that squared. Okay, for number 19, we are going to differentiate this implicitly. So we're going to take the derivative of each term here. Uh, the derivative of 2x cubed is going to be 6x squared. Then we take the derivative of y squared, which is going to be 2y times I kind of have to use the chain rule here, times dy dx. And then the derivative of 3, which is just 0. We're going to solve this for dy dx. So that's going to give us 2y dy dx is equal to negative 6x squared. And that's going to give us that dy dx is equal to uh, negative 6x squared over 2y which is going to simplify to negative 3x squared over y. Now we have, let me just write that down here, now we have dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared over y. Now we can take the second derivative, and again we're going to have to use uh, do this implicitly. So take the derivative of the left side, well, the derivative of dy dx is going to be the second derivative. And now over here, we're going to have to do the quotient rule. So we've got the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Well, the derivative of y here is just going to be dy dx all over the bottom squared. We can simplify this a little bit. So here we can multiply these out. We have negative 6xy. And 
a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive 3x squared. Put this in pink here, dy dx, because we can't leave that there. We'll see what we're going to do with here over y squared. Now, you cannot leave your answer like this because we have the second derivative in terms of the first derivative. But we know what the first derivative is. The first derivative is this. So we can plug that into this spot. So it's going to give us negative 6xy plus 3x squared times negative 3x squared over y. Where does that come from? Right there. All over y squared. And let me go up here to the top, clean some of this off here. So if we simplify this a little bit more, we have negative 6xy plus 3x squared plus, sorry. If we simplify this, we'd have a complex fraction. We have negative 6xy plus, if we simplify this complex fraction, we'd have negative 6xy minus 9x to the fourth over y, all over y squared. To simplify this complex fraction, just multiply by y over y. Then we've got negative 6xy squared minus 9x to the fourth, all over y cubed. Okay, 21. Here's our last one. Uh, this is going to be similar to to 19. I just wanted to show you again. So again, we want to first uh, start out by taking the derivative implicitly. So the derivative of the left side is just zero. And then we have the derivative of 2x cubed, which is going to be 6x squared. The derivative of negative y squared is going to be negative 2y. And then we're going to have, of course, their dy dx. And we want to get the dy dx by itself. So you should be able to see that dy dx is going to equal, uh, what, 6x squared over 2y, which is going to simplify to 3x squared over y. And now we can take the second derivative. So we've got our dy dx is equal to 3x squared over y. We're going to differentiate again, so it gives us the second derivative. And again, we're going to use the quotient rule here, so it's bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. That's going to give us 6xy minus 3x squared. And what are we going to put in for dy dx? We're going to put in this 3x squared over y. That's going to give us 6xy minus 9x to the fourth over y, all over y squared. And again, since we have a complex fraction, you could multiply by y over y. You get 6xy squared minus 9x to the fourth all over y cubed. That's it. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye!